My plan was to get the most unflattering picture of this kid's d and print out hundreds of them and post them all around school the next day. Jesus Christ. Hello everyone, my name is Pine Lee. I just turned 22 at the time of recording this. And you know, it seems as if I like to make myself suffer at times for money. But hey, enough about me. Back in March 2015, Shane Dawson decided to release his bad YouTuber book. And it was bad. It seems as if it wasn't enough for this man to be one of the biggest YouTubers of all time and to be the star of a not-so-great horror movie. No, he, for some reason, also decided to release a book because uh, I'm guessing that this is something that his manager told him to do. This book, this very, very interesting book, uh, called I Hate My Selfie is essentially a collection of essays written by Shane detailing different events that have occurred in his life in somewhat of a dramatic and comedic way. So I thought, what better way is there for me to consume this book but to hear it straight from the beautiful mouth of the person who wrote it. So instead of reading this awful, awful thing with my eyes, I decided to listen to it with my ears using an audiobook version. And because I felt like I shouldn't suffer through this thing alone, I went ahead and brought in this little small up and coming British YouTuber called James Marriott to do this thing with me. We split all the essays in this book between the two of us. Half of them would be in this video that you're watching right now, and the other half would be on his. I put on my nice Mr. YouTuber mask to not intimidate the guy, and we went together on this great adventure, trying to listen to, to Shane Dawson's book. I should warn you in advance, this book is, is pretty messed up. I don't know much about trigger warnings and all that kind of stuff, but this would probably tick off everything. Literally, every type of thing. Three, two, one, let's go. If you have any sharp objects or pill bottles nearby, hide them in the cupboard. This entire experience might throw you into a suicidal state. Right, <laughs> self, self harm joke, let's go. The first story we listen to is simply called Prom. I mean, the title of it is kind of self-explanatory. It's about Shane's absolutely wacky and weird prom experience. This great, great tale was in fact adapted to two short films, I Hate My Selfie One, and I hate myself too. He actually ended up deleting the first one, probably, maybe, because of a reference to child prostitution. You look like a child prost, but happy about it. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to censor a lot of this if I want this video to stay monetized. I think that what this tale does best is just show us how much Shane truly sucks <laughs> as a book writer. This story. It's just about his sort of weird prom experience, and somehow he spent so much time not talking about any of that. You wouldn't believe how long it took him until he started talking about the actual prom event. He just kept going on forever and ever in circles before he actually addressed the topic that this chapter is about. I feel like that managed to drive James and I slightly insane. At the beginning of this, he gave that warning about how this chapter is gonna make you develop suicidal thoughts. Self-harm joke, let's go. And then in like the middle of the chapter, he says the exact same thing again. He just repeats himself. He spent so much time talking about nonsense, just spewing all this useless bullshit. He figured you probably already forgot about his original warning, or maybe he just forgot that he gave it. I don't know. Once again, hide the sharp objects. All right. At some point, Shane started talking about this tree that him and his friends all used to hang out around. He gives us all this background and tells us about all these different characters, and it drags on for way too long. He takes so much time introducing these people, and with each person that he talks about, he just falls into like seven different tangents. And you listen to it, and you just figure that this is exposition, that this is gonna pay off in some way or another. But guess what? All these stories and characters, they just go nowhere. They're just mentioned now for a little bit, and after that, they cease to be a part of the story. They have zero importance to what he's telling. Then there was a four foot tall stoner named Pam. Hey Pam, what's up? Fucking bullshit, bitch. Motherfucker's dumbass fucking with that bitch again. Shit. <laughs> oh, this is really thoughts, bad. Thoughts, this is thoughts really bad. Thoughts on the accent? <laughs> That's really bad. The only person who's actually important in this friend group is Kelly, Shane's future prom date, who also happens to be a lesbian, as Shane so adequately states. And future prom date Kelly. Did I mention she was a lesbian? Now, Kelly explains to Shane that her dad is a bit of a dick. Seems like he isn't the biggest fan of his daughter's sexual orientation, and he is willing to buy Shane a free meal at Denny's if he takes Kelly to prom. 
which, at least from the way that Shane depicts it, seems like something that she's actually fine with. So for Shane, this decision, whether to go with his friend to prom and support her, or just not do that, seems like a no-brainer. He didn't have any plans in advance to go with anyone else. Why would he not do that? But for some reason, I don't know, maybe for dramatic effect, he paints this pretty easy decision as like a life or death scenario. I didn't know what would hurt more, letting my friend down or going to prom with a lesbian. It was like choosing between lice and crabs. One was contagious and the other one would only affect me. Why? Why is that such a big deal? I don't get it. Yeah, supporting your friends. Pff, fuck that. People go to prom with their friends. That's a thing that happens. He compared going to prom with his friend, who's also a lesbian, to, to having crabs or having lice. I, I didn't fully get the analogy that he did there. <laughs> Either way, after a lot of thought, he ends up saying yes. He goes to prom with this, ah, lesbian. <laughs> He goes to prom with his friend, and I'm sure it was all nice and lovely. That's the plot here, which in itself holds a very tiny, minuscule amount of the runtime in its chapter. Most of the runtime is, is just being used up by all these time wasters. Shane has a few classic time wasters in this book, uh, mainly three. He has one, tangents. He'd talk about some random person, and then he'd start talking about a story he thinks is funny that relates to that said person, and then when he's in that story, he might go on to another tangent. It's like tangentception over here. Uh, two, he has a lot of pointless details and characters. Really, th there are so many details in this book that I'd be perfectly fine not ever hearing in my life. I picked up that wrist flower thing on the way there, and then I accidentally sat on it. To say it was destroyed would be an understatement. I did to that wrist flower thing what God did to the dinosaurs. Extinct. Hey, hey, extinct. These flowers just got pwned. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, analogies. It's just his main form of telling a joke. Just being like, that thing tasted worse than two shits in a burger. I'm not really too good at this, uh, I can tell. <laughs> and really, the thing that ties all of these time wasters together is just how disgusting they all tend to be. He keeps making everything that he talks about so needlessly nasty. I feel like at times, I can even smell this, this world that Shane has built in this book. I ran to the bathroom and I locked myself in the stall. I cried for a good 10 minutes, and then I took a shit. There's nothing more depressing than crying while smelling your own shit. It's almost as depressing as eating sandwich rolls at a funeral reception. Whoever thought a funeral reception was a good idea needs to be shot. What does this I have sat to on do that toilet for a good 30 minutes. <laughs> this one, really, it's just the perfect combo. It's disgusting. There's sort of an analogy in it. It involves two things, two details that I don't really care about him pooping and this discussion about funeral homes. Really, I'm glad that we started off with this chapter because I feel like it helped James and I to be more ready. Or at least that's what I thought. James, uh, so you remember all the documentaries that Shane used to do about Jake Paul being a sociopath and yeah. all that kind of stuff? Do you know how he also attempted to diagnose him with barely any qualifications. So let me know, what, what, <laughs> what, what do you think of him based on what he says at the beginning of this chapter? Okay. How to survive a horror movie. When I was a kid, I would run around my house with a knife and pretend to murder my family. Thoughts? <laughs> that, that I wasn't, when you said at the beginning of this chapter, I wasn't expecting it to be the first sentence. If the last chapter taught us that Shane is a not so great writer, I feel like this one, mainly just teaches me that I should keep my goddamn mouth shut if I don't like dying. Everything that he says here in this chapter sounds like a recording of a serial killer's therapy session. I know this sounds like something you might hear in a recording of a serial killer's therapy session, but I promise it's not that bad. Oh, but, but don't worry, it's not that bad. One day I walked into the living room while my older brother was watching a movie called Child's Play. It was about a kid whose doll tried to kill him which I found perfectly plausible because of all the terrible things I had forced my dolls to do. What the fuck? Guys, I I'm beginning to believe that we started this whole thing on the wrong foot. L let's do this from the top. Let's start this video now. Hello everyone. Today, we're gonna talk about why I think that Shane Dawson's book is really good. Maybe the best book? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. Reason number one. It gives us a very, very good insight on what exactly is going on in Shane Dawson's head. There's something so satisfying about watching a fictional character get ripped to pieces and splattered all over the walls. 
It takes true talent to really give your readers such an accurate depiction of who or what you are. And I think that Shane, by only using a few simple words, does a brilliant job in telling us that we should all watch our fucking backs. What I like is the sound of a knife scraping bone beneath the skin. Sue me. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Haha. <laughs> 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 nice one, Shane. Uh, reason number two to why this book is so great is that even though this collection of essays is about Shane Dawson's life, something that's obviously very personal, he still makes sure to keep the depiction of all the events very, very objective. He's very fair and also knows how to critique himself when that's needed. For example, in this chapter, there's a very interesting bit where he lets the reader know that even though it may seem like it, Shane is not perfect. There were times in his life where he might have not been the greatest of friends. Every time my friends would come over, I would force them to play the scream game. Basically, it was just me chasing them with a knife and them having to defend themselves with whatever household items they could find. The only oh rules were we couldn't- And reason number three to why this book is really good is it's, it's, uh, it's the fact that, <sighs> you, you know what? I, I can't really do this anymore. This thing really stinks. I, I think it's the worst book I've ever read. You know, all these little bits and clips that I showed you from this chapter, they again have nothing to do with the actual story that he's supposedly telling. The story is literally just about a kiss scene that he had to do for the horror movie Smiley, a movie that I hate, by the way. But he kicks the chapter off by giving us like seven minutes worth of evidence to a future murder case. This audiobook is only four hours long. It's pretty short compared to other stuff that I've listened to. But because of how bloated it is and how unfocused it is and, and how it's filled up with all these things that are pretty much not supposed to be there, it ends up feeling as if it's 10 times that length. There was one bit where he says that watching horror movies was a way for him to feel like he has more control over his life, and just listen to what he has to say next. Watching horror films was a way for me to escape that, and watch people who had shittier lives than me. Another attempt at control was to hold in my poop. I would hold it in for days. <laughs> so much so... What? When did this become fucking... about shit? Behind all this crap, we have a story, and that story... It's a pretty bad one. It's a pretty bad story. Shane was about to make out with the lead actress in the movie for a scene, and the person who played the main character's friend told her in advance before shooting that bit that she had experiences on set filming kissing scenes where guys would suddenly maybe touch her and do things that were not written in the script originally. Things that were obviously totally out of line. So she told her just to make sure that she doesn't do anything that she isn't comfortable with. You know, that it's okay to say no even if it's on a movie set. Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me, this seems like such an indisputably reasonable thing to warn someone about, just considering the sheer amount of disgusting creeps that are working in Hollywood. But Shane takes this warning to heart. He's like, oh, this is outrageous. How dare she say this about me? She doesn't know me. I I'm a nice guy. I'm Shane Dawson. I was pissed. How could this random actress, who I had never even spoken to, assume that I was some kind of pervert who was trying to fuck my co-star? No, she isn't assuming that you're actually a horrible person. She's telling this girl who has less experience than her in this field to watch out in case you are a creep because, like you stated, she doesn't actually know you. The fact that Shane was outraged by this warning to the extent that he decided to go ahead and write a whole book chapter about it is just really funny to me. <laughs> Especially when you think about how Smiley was filmed in 2011 and this book came out in 2015. He had that shit pent up inside of him for four years. He's essentially insane. A picture of a flaccid ninth grade boy's p this is easily the most criminal chapter out of the bunch, and I mean that very literally. He confesses here to an actual serious criminal offense. You gotta admit, that takes some balls. This chapter kicks off with him wasting our time once again, talking about some stuff that has barely any connection to the story. Skipping a bit ahead though, a high school Shane is talking to a bunch of dumb surfer dudes in what is maybe the most lazily written conversation I've seen in a while. So, what did you guys do last night? Surfer kid number one. Got high with my uncle and tried to get his dog drunk. Me. Fun. What about you? Surfer kid number two. Fuck some chick I met on AIM. Me. Oh my god, that's so redundant. Can you imagine if Harry Potter was just like, wizard number one. Hey, wizard number two. Sup. Wizard number three. 
Yo, he makes it such a chore to read this book. It's like I'm, I'm reading a grocery list or something. The gist of this conversation, though, is that these guys are making fun of Shane for being overweight. And so he gets really pissed off and starts planning his twisted little revenge. And I think we should hear it from him. Let's listen to Shane explaining to us what he decided to do to one of these guys. I could pretend to be a girl on AIM and ruin their lives. So I went to Google Images and typed in high school girl Surprisingly, this led to oh, pages and pages of options. So, I sent my first AIM message to I Like Nipple Rings. My screen name was Carol is Wet. My first message was simple. This is all a bit a big scheme to see an underage p and he's put that in a book. So he got a picture of this kid's personal area and printed it out so he could potentially hang around in his school. He then goes into so much detail in this book, explaining to us how this kid's looks like. He, he goes into excruciating levels of details and it's just so fucking disgusting and messed up and also insane. It's insane that he felt like he could include that in a book. Releasing a book is a very big deal. So many people have to go over it before it's published. So it's just mind boggling that he ended up actually including this bit. Anyways, at the end, he feels bad for the guy and decides not to post child p all over his school. I'm sure that the possibility of ending up in prison for this uh, might have influenced his decision. And you wanna know what's the most outrageous part about all of this? The most outrageous thing is that he tries he does his best to somehow paint himself as a good guy at the end of the story. He wasn't fine. He was miserable, like a puppy that had just gotten its balls cut off. I didn't want to feel bad for him, but uh, unfortunately underneath all my big fat layers was an even bigger fat heart. No, you know what? No, you don't get to do that, Shane. Get off your high horse, Shane Dawson. You have absolutely no ground to stand on. Y you're groundless. Did you notice that he said, unfortunately, he unfortunately decided not to do this awful, awful thing. Heck, I, I bet he regrets it to this day. Sometimes in my videos, I make sure to state that I have no intention of talking about drama and that the video is solely talking about the creative thing that the person has made. But you know what? For this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, screw that. Shane really pissed me off. He pissed me off so much that I compiled a list of some of the worst things that he has said in this book in an attempt to actually start some drama for once. I'm, I'm gonna stir some tea. I'm tired of being a good boy. The first one I'm gonna show you is actually pretty tame compared to the rest. Then it hit me like an 18-wheeler through a school hallway. Yeah, it's just a bad analogy joke. He does that loads in this book, as we already established. This next comment, though, is about his very nice mom, who raised him alone for the most part as a single mother. Must have been pretty tough. You know, must have been pretty tough for her. Let's all hear Shane's appreciation for his mom. I felt like I was about to make out with a girl while her overprotective mom watched. It was incredibly creepy. And because of my mommy issues, slightly a turn on. What the fuck? This book stinks. It reeks from the fact that it was written by such an incompetent writer. It's redundant. It's disgusting and it lacks a whole lot of focus. After this, I think I've experienced maybe every single creative thing that Shane has done over the years. A book, movie, song, and I must say, I, I, I'm not a big fan of any of it. I feel really bad for James. I brought him into my channel as a guest just to help him out a little bit. But you know what? I don't think that he had a good time at all. I think I just made him suffer. And that's not how you're supposed to treat your guests. We've only listened to two chapters probably in total at this point. It feels like I'm, there are, I'm just having nails hammered into me. Either way, I love you guys. You should now go see James's video on this book. I'm also in it. We're tackling the other half of this thing for, for some reason. It's honestly the worst book I've ever read, uh, mainly because I've never tried to read a book to make myself suffer. So yeah, keep it real. Subscribe today, uh, right now, and goodbye. <laughs>